Uh, good morning, everybody. So, my topic is imaging in central serous cholesterol tomography. I will try to avoid the repetition as much as possible, as Dr. George already pointed out. The objectives of imaging in central serous cholesterol tomography are evaluation of the disease, treatment, progression of the disease, and to better understand the disease, and of course, for research purposes. So commonly used tools, if we see, there are color and infrared photographs because nowadays lots of imaging instruments coming where the color photos you may not get, only the infrared photographs are available. And then digital frozen angiogram, fundus autofluorescence, optical coherence tomography, and endocyanogreen angiography. The fluorescent angiography, if you go first, the acute phase shows ink blot and smokestack pattern. The smokestack pattern is less common and pigment epithelium detachment shows pooling of the dye. We'll limit ourselves to the photos mostly because otherwise the description will be very boring, I think. So if you see here, there is one small smokestack, uh, in blood leak, pointer, yeah. I don't think it is open. So if you see right hand side upper photograph showing the small in blood dot point and the right hand side lower photographs, it's increasing. This is one of the central serous cholesterol with some fibrin and you can see two points are leaking, both are in blood pattern. This is one typical smokestack pattern. You can see here. And then this is one of the reverse most crack. This is due to the fibrin deposition, which is forcing the dye going downwards. And then the pooling. Pooling occurs because of the breakdown of outer blood retinal barrier. And there is a neurosensory attachment, which is, that is the central serous retinopathy is hallmark. And there is retinal pigment epithelial detachment below that pooling occurs. So pooling can be due to this neurosensory detachment or the RP detachment. The chronic CSR, the hallmarks are window defects, retinal pigment epithelium window defects, then multifocal leakage points and atrophic tracts. That is already described by Dr. George. I'm not going into details. And showing some of the photographs, this is the typical atrophic tracts. And you can see some leakage points here. And here, one of the color photos, you can see this uh, huge inferior detachment with already bad posterior pole with subretinal fibrosis. And this is another one of the chronic CSR. If we see the big area of posterior pole rugby changes, window defects, and few of the active leaks still present. So fundus autofluorescence next week come. Adjunctive tool it is and can differentiate between acute and chronic phases. Autofluorescent densitometry uh, software is there. If it is there in the imaging machine, it can measure the photopigment density, which shows delayed recovery after subretinal fluid resolution. Autofluorescent pattern usually correlates with the fission very well. So here we can see this uh, infrared photographs, and you will see the autofluorescence. This is a track going down, which is not so much visible in the infrared. And uh, the hyperfluorescence of a leakage point and neurosensor detachment in acute phase and in chronic case, we'll get hyperfluorescent in areas of neurosensory detachment and subretinal and yellow dots, which we find. And after absorption of the subretinal fluid, the lesion may become hyperfluorescent. So few of the photos, you can see the infrared right side and the same patients, if you see this uh, autofluorescence photo, and see the angiogram photo. This is the tracks going down, and this is the late phase angiogram. So this is another photos of showing retinal pigment epithelial leak and pooling. This is the area, and this is increasing slowly, and corresponding, if we see the autofluorescence, this is the leakage points which is showing the hyperfluorescence. Now we come to intracellular green angiography. This gives insights about the coronal pathology. Previously, we used to think and we used to name it as central serous retinopathy. Now we call it coronal retinopathy, and intracellular green angiography has one of its role. And it is important for the treatment with photodynamic therapy. Features are delayed coral filling initially. Early phase shows abnormal vessel dilatations. Mid phase shows punctate hyperfluorescence. 
and the late phase was choroidal hyperfemininity that is due to the dye leak in deeper choroidal layers. It's of course the area source greater than angiography leaks widespread and sometimes goes into the other eye also. If you see this is the before photodynamic therapy, this is the angiogram, this is the early phase ICG and this is the late phase ICG. This is the area of the PDD therapy we have done. It is done by, you take it from the IGO 2010 Mrs. Littol and see this is after the three months, it is in hypofluorescent and this is at the 12 months, the area is slightly increasing. And commonly present in fellow asymptomatic eyes also, hypofluorescent area shows choroidal non-perfusion giving rise to vascular dilatation and congestion. That may be the cause basically which we find in the early and the mid phase of the ICG. This is another of the photos which we are seeing, the coronal vessel dilatation and late phase tissue staining with the ICG dye. So optical coherence tomography is a thickness and volume in three-dimensional and real-time structural assessment, subretinal fluid and pigment detachments you can get and it's assess progress without any interventional uh, investigation and it helps differentiate in unsuspecting subretinal lesions like cordal vascularization and polycordial vasculopathy. So these are the few of the photos, so the infrared photos you can see, and this is a chronic CSR photo, and you can see this the OCT photo, and there's cystoid changes and ISOS junction disruption, in a segment after segment junction disruption associated with poor visual outcome. This is one of the cases. So with this patient came nicely round a macular dystrophy like thing and this is a 30 year old because in 624 and the OCT you can see there is small fluid which gives a diagnosis of CSR, chronic CSR definitely and you see the junctions which is there nicely and here it is destroyed the RP also table. And there are some of the OCTs we are going to show this is the pigment epithelial detachment with the central cystoscular retinopathy is the subretinal fluid and pigment epithelial detachment both side by side. Subretinal fibrin you can see this is the Typical sign, Dr. Nazimun was mentioned uh, that neurosensory retinal dips at the fibrosensory fibrin deposition. There are some of the few more photos. And these are the cystoid changes in the outer retinal layers in the chronic central serous retinopathy. This is one of the cases you see. Uh, this is the infrared photos and this is the angiogram. And this is the ICG, the early and the mid phase, late phase. This is the portion where we can see the hyperfluorescence areas of which we did the PDT and this is the treatment areas. And this is the result of the same patient. This is the pre-photodynamic therapy, this is the post one month. You can see the flattening, some stink of fluid still remaining but more or less is much looking better. Surface architecture also, the OCT helps us to delineate nicely. And this is another of the photos if you see. The vision is less, after, we saw it at 618 vision and after three months vision deteriorated to 624. And we did the angiogram at the three months, we see there is no leak. Then we, we see the OCT, then we can see the reason, see the fibrin subretinal. Though the height is less, the central angular thickness, but due to the fibrin only, the vision decreased. So enhanced depth imaging is one of the new tools. You see the normal retina contour and this is the EDI normal retina and it is a central serous retinopathy. the coronal thickness increases and a few of the differential diagnoses if we see, I am not going into the details because Dr. George already went into very details, so few of them, the like coronal retina is already mentioned by him. And this is the DD, uh, see in a simple smoke tax leak, okay, smoke tax leak in the CSU. And we have patient's age was 66 years, so we went for the ICG and we found, see, this is nicely hidden pathology. This is the PCV, polypodal cord vasculopathy. This is the leak, and this is the, the RP bridge, and this is the dilated portal vessels here. Thank you. And there are two other things we want to say, but this is not perfectly imaging if we say, because it, this is the physiological, electrophysiological test multifocal EEGs, which we do mainly for the research purpose. I'm not going into details. Only things I can mention is the first order decreases in central involvement and the second order canal is due to more peripheral involvement. In fact, both the first and second order canal multiple energy amplitude is reduced. And then there is micro -periphery. So that is also strictly which cannot put in the imaging, but it is getting used in the CSR to keep the prognostic factors. Thank you.